So today I'm going to ma be making the free pattern from More Me Know. It is the car trash can. Uh, everybody in my family has one just about except for my father. I was supposed to make him one for Father's Day and I've been in a really kind of funk lately and haven't been sticking to any kind of schedule. So I'm trying to get myself out of it. Anyway, so pay attention to how you cut it because there is, it's a, it's a measurement that she gives you. Um, and then I just made my own template. So it's the 15 across is supposed to be the top, which as you can see, I cut it the wrong way. So it's going to be longer than it is wider which is fine. It would, you know, it'll just be uh, deeper than the pattern calls for. I've made it both ways. Actually, I kind of like it longer because then it hangs neatly behind the car, uh, the seat of the car. So, and the, I just like it that way. And to me, you can add more stuff to it. So the first thing I'm going to do, I already cut out my pattern pieces and here are the two handles. Again, I'm not interfacing these. Uh, it's just a car trash can and even when I sell them I don't interface them I have I use waterproof canvas for the lining and cotton for the exterior so the first thing I'm going to do is she provides you a two by two cutout from for the uh, boxed bottom so I'm just going to lay this on here and I'm going to cut around and let me make sure, yes, they are both facing the right way because I have done that before too. This pattern is very easy to um, fix anything that you might mess up. And it makes great gifts uh, because it saves on tra uh, plastic from using um, plastic bags for trash cans and all kinds of stuff. So next thing I'm going to do is the same thing for the lining, but I need to make sure that they are going the right way, the same way as the exterior. And as you can see, I kind of just rough cut my lining, which I will cut down. So. Again, we're going to cut this little square out the bottom. This is so your it creates a boxed bottom. And because I did not interface this at all, um, you can see right here that I had to bring out Junior for the exterior and I had to add my walking foot because my Domestic machine does not like waterproof canvas. So, next thing I'm going to do is now we just need to clip everything together. So I'm going to do right sides together for my ex, uh, lining and I'm just going to clip around it. Make sure you leave a hole in the bottom for turning. Set that to the side and we'll do the same thing for the exterior, right sides together. I used to have a table just for my domestic machine, but we have our large TV on it. so. And I don't hardly use my uh, used junior that much anymore, so it's just easier for me to just keep him put up and then bring him out um, whenever I need him. So we don't need a hole on this one, so I just clipped all the way around it and we're going to set that aside. Next we need our two 
handles and we're going to clip these right sides together and I just like to start from the top again uh, this pattern does allow where if you are not a great cutter um, like me sometimes it, it's very easy to just fix I'm start with the other handle I got these clips from a Walmart in the hair section and they make I love using these clips um, just because I can slide them off as I go now for heavier items like if I'm using a lot of interfacing foam stuff like that I will use those whoop, run away I will use those regular clips and I get them from Amazon they come in the in these neat little tin cases and I go through those like no tomorrow. So we're going to leave this bottom open completely to turn. And I'm going to go turn on my iron. So once we turn it, this is the only part that I iron flat so we can top stitch. Okay, so now I'm just going to pull this close. And we're going to sew all the way around except for the very bottom. And I'm just doing it the width of my foot which this is my walking foot, so I think a quarter. Back stitch. And we're going to turn. As you can see, I'm kind of out of practice with this walking foot. So I'm trying to make sure that it stays straight because it likes to move. So for this, we need to come down. And yes, I hand crank because sometimes you want it to stay even. So it's, I use the width of my foot. So I need to make sure that when I do my turns, I'm staying the same distance. If that makes sense. And anytime you do turns or make adjustments, make sure your needle is down. So now I'm just going to trim around those corners and make some snips so it will lay flat. But do not cut into your stitches. And I'm going to just trim off these corners. Want to turn.
you want to make sure you poke out those top corners as much as you can sometimes just rolling it because it's not interface it's just cotton so sometimes just rolling it helps Now I'm going to go to the iron and iron this down as best as I can to make it flat so we can top stitch. Okay, so now that we have it all ironed out, we're going to top stitch and you can also close it up. And I'm going to top stitch about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now this machine is a Singer Heavy Duty, actually it's a Singer Classic, um, and I used to actually make bags on this until I got my industrial. Alright, so we're going to close it up now. I'm going to trim this bottom, um, get rid of any of these flyaways. And because it is a little bit uneven. So the only thing we have left to do with this is to fold it in half at the bottom. We are going to make a little snip for the middle and set it aside. We will add the snap whenever we are completely done with the bag. So now I'm going to get the exterior and I'm going to sew all the way around um, at a, a quarter of an inch, the width of my foot. Back stitch where those corners are so they don't come undone while you're moving it around. Now we need to just box those corners. So you're gonna just pull it, open it from the sides right here, this notch. Just gonna pull it straight across and match up those seams and just clip it. And we're going to sew straight across at a quarter of an inch seam allowance for both sides. I like to back stitch over the seam. Okay. 
Again, match up those center marks. Pull it as flat as you can, straight. And quarter inch seam allowance. If it doesn't match up perfectly, that's okay. Now I know I'm not sure exactly what how the pattern says to do this, but if they tell you to do it before or after or whatever. So I'm going to, after I sew it up, I'm just going to fold it in half and I am going to make a notch because we need to add the handles. So I'm just going to add a notch for this center seam. I'm going to lay it flat on my table. Take our handles and we're going to match up those two notches. and baste it down and because my seam allowance is a quarter I am going to baste it down at an eighth of an inch and I just add a few back stitches as I'm going across and my thread pulled out this is why I don't use this machine that much. So I'm just going to re-thread it. a few back stitches as I go because this is a trash can. It's going to get a lot of, um, like I put coke, my old cokes in there and stuff. So. All right. So our exterior is done for the moment. So we're going to set this aside and work on our lining. My handles on the inside. Which I'm going to go ahead and flip it out. So when you do it the opposite way than what the pattern calls for, as you can see, it's a little longer. But I like that, so. Alright. Same thing with the lining. Okay, so I had accidentally, because <laughs> my mind, I guess, was elsewhere, started sewing across the top, which is, you know, it's okay. So I'm just going to use a uh, ratchet right here to do the waterproof canvas because that machine just really does not like, even with the walking foot, my stitches were really close together. It just doesn't like it. So I'm just going to sew around this using ratchet at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to backstitch at those holes or at the beginning and ending of my notches and don't forget to leave a hole. It doesn't have to be that big because again it's just cotton with no interfacing.
And we are going to do the same thing with these corners. Match up those center seams. Okay, so now what we can do is stick our exterior into our lining. Make sure your handles are down and we are going to match up these side seams. I'm just making sure that it's not going to be overly like two different sizes because I cut this out a while back and even I mess up cutting out patterns that's why I like to make patterns that are easy to like if I mess up it's easy to fix as I go along so I'm just going to clip all the way around Here we go and I'm going to sew this down at a quarter of an inch let's see how my machine will handle it and I'm quarter of an inch all the way around again about the width of my foot let's see I don't know if you can see it okay. anytime you want to move or adjust Make sure your needle is down. And I always back stitch over these seams. And I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and end of my handles. Kind of having to give my machine a little bit of help with this waterproof canvas but that's all right honestly i don't know how i made bags on this machine sometimes like i really don't but i did for four years So now what I'm going to do is just trim down this top a little bit, but not where the flap is or where my seams are. Now we just turn it and we need a top stitch. Before a top stitch, since I have the lining out, I'm just gonna go ahead and close this up after I make sure sure that somehow I made a mistake right there so I need to turn it back out and close that up we all make mistakes so 
no biggie. I'm just going to turn this back out. Pull it tight. It could just move on me. So I'm going to just start and stop right there um, on my machine. closed it up. Make sure my other side is good. Okay. Make sure before I close it up that this is all good. Again, <sighs> I'm just going to close up this bottom. I'm not adding a tag because it's for my dad. Um, so it's not going anywhere. I'm just going to sew this closed using ratchets. An eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm just going to roll this top seam with my fingers and just add a few clips to keep it straight. Now, if you was making this, if I was making this bag out of cotton lining and cotton exterior, I probably would interface one. Um just to give it a little bit of uh, weight because in all honesty to me that's what interfacing is for is to take stretch out of fabric um, and to give it some weight to make it look you know stand up on its own stuff like that so with this being just a car trash can, I'm not too, too worried about it being able to stand up on its own or to have a lot of weight. Uh, it's extra expense that is not really needed for a, just a plain old car trash can. So I'm going to top stitch an eighth of an inch all the way around and I'm going to start at the flap. So because you can't clip the flap, I'm just going to roll with my fingers and pull the flap to the right while I top stitch. And I should have enough thread to top stitch, but we will see. Again, I'm going to roll the seam with my fingers, top and bottom, and just hold it down. Let me see if I can get you closer. just holding it flat as I go
Now I'm getting back to the flap. So again, I'm going to make sure that it's nice and flat. done with this machine and this is cotton thread so it can't really burn the threads so you need to cut as close as you can okay, the next thing see how deep it goes I like that So the only thing we have left to do is to add our our snaps to this uh, so I need to get all that out and then we will add it and then we will be done so I got this kit from Amazon I've had it for a while I don't uh, do a lot of snaps again I don't make too many of these trash cans because they do take it up a lot of uh, fabric so I'm going to do black if I can find one of each side oh, there's one And it also comes with the hand clamps. So before you poke any holes, you need to have your uh, handles the way it's going to go up behind, over the seat. So it's going to snap like this. So that's what I, I do. And then I will put it just like this, how I'm going to snap it, like it's already in the car. And then I'm going to poke a hole right in the middle with the tool it came with. Okay, and again, snap like this. You wanna make sure that the flat sides are going the right way, so I'll hold it like this to make sure I know it sounds dumb, but I messed up a couple of times. So just to make sure that these are going the right way, because you want one facing out and one on the bottom. Like that. So this is how it's gonna hang in the truck. So there we go. And then you just add each side I'm not a big fan of these. <laughs> I've wasted a lot from cracking, from uh, not working right. So what I like to do, just to make sure, is I will snap it and unsnap it a couple of times, just to make those, sure that those are, are good and secured. And there we have it. There is a car trash can and it will hang up just like this in the in his truck and then he can just put his trash in here and take it out empty it wash it and reuse and it saves on so much plastic and you would be surprised how much cleaner your you will keep your car when you have a car trash can so thank you for joining me